All right, guys, welcome to uh, this YouTube video and also say hi to Twitch chat. Twitch chat, say hi to YouTube. Yeah. Uh, this is going to be the patch preview slash review of uh, September 27th, the one where Zarya comes out. Um, I think I'll try to aim for about 10-15 minutes, so I may skip through some sections with really big hero reworks. But I kind of want to dig into what this patch could mean overall, see if there's any big... Uh, all encompassing changes and evaluate what Blizzard has done with various different heroes in Heroes of the Storm and whether those changes are yay or nay, good or bad, positive or negative. Did the heroes that needed to get nerfs deserve it? And vice versa, buffs. So, first of all, there's going to be a new battleground and a new hero, Zarya, the Russian ranged warrior specialist support character, DPS dealer. Um, and also uh, Warhead Junction. Warhead Junction is the map where there's lots of nuclear missiles. It's really fun. I'm not sure yet if it's balanced. It seems pretty chaotic, but I've mostly only played it in quick match so far. After this game, I'm going to try and play some Hero League games uh, after this review, and I'll try to uh, get a little bit more data on that, maybe upload a game for that for YouTube. Now, uh, Hero Prices is not really one of what I want to be talking about, the first big change, especially in terms of the recent patch preview on the PTR, uh, is going to be that the Zerg units get changed a little bit. Basically, if you don't look at this, which is uh, everyone's damage goes up, I think mostly we should be looking at this. The first and second Zerg Swarm are going to be weaker, uh, and the later ones are going to be stronger. It should help a little bit with the snowball-y feeling that the map has had ever since the beginning of its inception. This is true, and thus I rate them yay. Good changes. Uh, Alarak is a hero that has received a number of really significant buffs. Anything from mana reduction, cooldown reduction, and radius and damage increase. Pretty big. Alarak was not a very popular hero, and in the recent Europe Nexus Games tournament, which I have been casting and will continue to cast the following two weekends, Alarak has only seen play once, and he's lost. It was by one of the underdog teams, and he didn't seem very impactful. The biggest change that Alarak has received, which I think was extremely necessary, is the level 10, where he gets unstoppable for Counter-Strike. So Counter-Strike is that ability where you go into a party hat shape, and if anyone attacks you during the time, you will not take any damage, Furthermore, you will do a pretty powerful party hat shaped damage in front of you. The opponent cannot see the range, but they can become familiar with it. Your allies can see the range. Uh, it was pretty cool and good damage, and it's a way to make yourself a little bit more survivable. However, you were not able to often get it off, because if people displaced you, or if people stunned you, it got cancelled and put on a full cooldown. Now the cooldown is pretty short, 30 seconds, but it basically made it almost never go off. Now he will be unstoppable, it was necessary, it's good, I vote yay. Lightning Search is going to get the level 1 talent embedded, where uh, you get the bigger range, uh, the bigger width. I took it from time to time because I felt the width was too narrow. It's a good change, its damage also goes up and its mana goes down. Basically use this on cooldown every single time, every single time, every single time. Alarak did get some mana issues when using it, so this one will help a lot. He still gets the Power Conduit, which was 15 off of 40, now it's 10 off of 30. That's still a really good change. He can go to only 20 mana consumption for Lightning Surge. The damage is up a bit. It's his only form of self-sustain. It's good. 5 mana off here as well. Uh, and then Thunderstruck will slow people longer. This is the one where you take a Sadism penalty at level 7. For 70% slow, for 1.5 seconds, it was really good, but now 2, I feel like it's extremely good. I don't know if you can take it, there's the Discord Strike Quest talent at 7 as well. It's the most popular right now, and I think the most winningest. But, I think this will be a very compelling counter choice. Really good changes on Alarak, I vote yay. Hindered Motion, uh, Telekinesis Slow, I don't know about that. You take Sadism Penalty, it's only 40% slow. I don't like this one, the buff is merited, I still won't take it. But overall really good. Chromie now. I feel like Chromie is in a pretty good spot. I think she's powerful in Hero League and when you take her at the right time, Chromie can and will demolish. 
She's a very safe damage dealer and her health almost never comes into play. Which is why at level 20 almost no one takes bye bye or ice block. Good positioning, understanding and judgment of the scenario and picking her in the right comps. That is saying, not against Illidan Butcher Stitches Chen. If you pick her in the right comps, Chromie will be very effective. And we don't need her to be effective in every single scenario. The fact that her health is going up, it's not a lot. It's 126 HP at level 20. I don't think it's merited. Uh, I think Chromie had her strengths and weaknesses. It was pretty easy to play a 1 or 0 death game. So I will say, nay, not needed. Her popularity was low in the tournament scene and is low. So in that sense, Chromie maybe needed some help. Um, I don't think her win rate was too hot in Hero League and in Quick Match, but uh, I don't think she needed this. Uh, then they wanted to look at this one. Everyone takes, this is by the way level 12, everyone is taking the range talent, the reaching through time. They have now added 6% to the base range of her spells and they removed 10% here. The net result is a 3% reduction post level 20 and a 6% increase pre level, uh, sorry, post level 12 and a 6% increase pre level 12 if you still take this. That is a pretty big buff because most of the game will be played pre level 12, maybe half at most will be played after it. Uh, to have 6% plus and then 3% minus is a good deal. Now let's say if you don't take it, maybe you don't need it anymore. Uh, I still think it's a really good increase this one, probably still take it. It's not a bad change overall, this is generally a buff and it allows a little bit for other talents to be picked. So I will say Chromie yay for this, but nay for this. Temporal loop was I think already already not the better alt anymore, Sand, shifting sands is better now. Nonetheless. If it works, if your ally omitted to take a cleanse, or if your allies get killed by it, I do think Chromie can do that too safely. So, some safety has been removed. I think it's a good change. Overall, 7 out of 10. Gul'dan. Gul'dan is, I would say, overall an underperforming hero. He has seen more play than Alarak in, in competitive play. However... He is probably not good enough. Almost every time that he has played in competitive, he has not won. And uh, while he's a very cool hero and can put out lots of damage, in particular siege damage, he's probably just a little bit undertuned. You could say that he needs some practice, and it's true, but I think enough time has been given. I would say small buffs are merited. A little bit less self-damage from trade, a little bit bigger base size on Thelflame, a little bit more healing... Cooldown reduction, 2 seconds, is quite a bit, I would say it's more than a little bit. 10% uh, 10 mana off as well. And then Echoed Corruption becomes a more difficult quest to complete. And Health Funnel is going to be a full cooldown reduction instead of 7 seconds. I think that's okay. It was already doing from like 10 to 7 and because you're channeling for 3, generally it was off of cooldown already. If it took the full cooldown of Drain Life, the full casting time of Drain Life to finish. It's just a little bit more consistent and feeling like quality of life now. I would say it's a good change. This one rewards people who can hit it more, I guess. It is a pretty tough quest to complete in certain matchups, but I don't mind it too much considering it was buffed quite a bit. Overall, Gul'dan is getting very solid buffs. I'm looking forward to playing him, and I will say, yay, 8 out of 10. Li Ming. Uh, these changes we already saw, and they are not new from what we saw a week ago. So, I will not comment too much on it. But Li Ming overall didn't really get nerfed or buffed. It's just a bit different. She is top tier. So I will say a little bit more could have been done to nerf her. But overall, I don't mind it too much. Small nerfs could have been needed. I will say a small nay. But it's okay. Butcher Furnace Blast is okay. This is the underused heroic comparatively. It's the weaker one as well. To be able to cast it more often, I think it's fair. 60 seconds is okay. Yay. Vote yay. Uh, Tychus is going to get a health increase. Loses the resistant. The shrug it off. That hurts a lot. And then he gets some buff to the other E talents that no one ever took. Odin is going to get a damage reduction component throughout the entire 22 seconds of its duration. This is a good change because Odin does not see a lot of play. 
However, you still lose your minigun during Odin. So it is a halfway step, or maybe I should say one quarter step, one quarter portion, Star Wars. It is a one quarter step towards the old functionality of Odin, which was a second health bar. Effectively, you have a 125% health bar now. Odin doesn't give you a second one anymore, but you're a bit tougher. Using Odin now as a method to be safer is now a viable choice. For example, in quick match games without warriors, or in uh, hero league games where you keep dying. I think it's okay, it's a good change. I'm still not sure I will go for Odin, but overall I would say this is a yes, 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 no. But it has been done. I will rate it 7 out of 10. Not too bad, I don't like everything about it, but overall I would say this one in particular is quite good. Vala is going to get some buffs, even though she's seeing a lot of competitive play, a lot of Hero League play, and she's not doing badly. I feel like most of these changes were planned before people knew that Vala was going to be good. She had really negative reviews at first when she got uh, announced, and when people started to play her, people said that she doesn't do damage, blah 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 blah. However, her most popular build now, the one that people are winning with, is Multishot. All the talents that have been buffed here have been Vault, Hungering Arrow, Hungering Arrow, Hungering Arrow, and Vault. Reign of Vengeance. And the popular build right now is Multishot Strafe. So I feel like Blizzard did some quick, and you can see that here as well, did some quick readjustments to allow the other builds to be viable as well. Because they think it's very important that people not only are able to play every build, but also to stimulate trying out other builds. I'm not sure if this will make her OP, it's very possible that it will, but mm, I think buffing them at least is good, and a nerf on multi-shot is a little bit too early. Keep in mind that top damage dealers have long been Kel'Thas for 6 to 9 months he was, Liming, etc. There have been heroes that have been at the top of the food chain for a long time. To have Vala perform well for a week and then to nerf her would be unfair I think. So what if Vala becomes the top tier assassin for a while? She is a pretty high skill cap hero now with lots of mobility, very low health pool. I think it's okay. Overall I will say yay. Good changes. Nazebo hasn't changed since he got announced on the PTR, so we'll kind of just skip past him. But overall we don't like him too much now, at least I don't, because of the way that his uh, spiders work. The projectile of the spiders now is too slow, and it also does not create spiders unless you hit a target. I don't like that part too much, but I'm looking forward to hear hearing other people say that they like him. Uh, something for everyone, but not for me too much. Lily is going to get a level 16 where Shake It Off does not have a cooldown of 10 seconds anymore. It will give her a big amount of resistance for a pretty long time. That So if you stun or root Lily at 16, she will take half damage for 4 seconds every time. That is crazy tier. And... I think that might be the talent to take. You can be very aggressive with Lily now. Go for the Cloud Serpent build. However, she loses Cloud Serpent on an ally. That is a difficult one to give up. Because that's also at level 16. So if anything, Lily gets a very, very strong competing talent at level 16. Whereas before, almost everyone always took the double Serpent. Because they're going Serpent at 1, 4 and 7. Now, if you are going for Blinding Wind build, or some other kind of utility or healing build, then I think this could definitely be the one to take. Very interesting. Malf has got some changes, try him out. He's Swag Furion now, he's sitting at 59% win rate. If you haven't tried him recently, go try him out. He has a lot of good builds right now, because he offers more healing per second than he did before, even though it's less bursty. He's really being pushed to the healing over time category, and I like it. Anubarak lost recently invulnerability while burrow charging. As a result, Anubarak can no longer be as survivable as before. Before, if you could chain bomb, pyroblasted, or even Lunara poison, you could burrow charge to safety and not take damage during it. The community asked for a bigger health pool to deal Greetings, with the loss. Friend. Hey, Patrino thank you very much. Feels good, man. Thank you very much, K Prax, for the seven months reset. The community asked for a health buff to compensate for the loss of it, and Blizzard has listened. I think it's a good change. Uh, Ring of Fire has been reduced by 2 seconds. This is the Ring of Fire after Fire Breath on himself. It's a very strong amount of Burning Rage, but 
it's not going to be five seconds anymore. I think that's okay. And then the radius was noticed to be bigger if you completed the quest. However, it was not initially listed in the tooltip. Now it is. So, that is, uh, I think it was part of the quest before, level 1 or 4 or whatever. But now it's part of the level 7. I think that's uh, that's okay as well. Chen seems pretty strong right now. Uh, I think Chen went up a lot in value. He could be top tier. I haven't played enough with him yet. And also note that Artanis' shield can now overlap. So even when he has a shield right now and he takes more damage and it procs it again, it will replace his shield. It was a bug that was not working as intended. I mean, bugs never do, right? And that part is fixed. So Artanis is a little bit more playable again. All right, cool. That was uh, the patch preview. It's, it looks like Twitch is starting to lag a bit again, so I think we pretty much finished on time. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This should be up on YouTube later. And for now, I'm going to go play another game.